The southern United States is preparing for the landfall of Tropical Storm Idalia. The weather system is moving north from Cuba and is expected to reach hurricane status by Tuesday. Christian Benavides in, is in Florida with more on preparations and planned evacuations. I'm very hopeful. I'm praying. It's all hands on deck in Tampa's Hillsborough County. Residents preparing for the potential power of Hurricane Idalia, filling sandbags bracing for up to 11 feet of storm surge along the Florida coast. After Ian last year, I'm actually keeping a hurricane kit because Ian kind of snuck up on us. 19 counties are under emergency evacuation orders, officials warning millions of residents along Florida's west coast to get to higher ground. This is going to be a major hurricane. Uh, this is going to be a powerful hurricane. Supplies are quickly running out. This woman grabbed the last few remaining gallons of water at this Publix. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm used to it. Just bunker down and, you know, hope for the best and pray we have power. Residents are being asked to keep their gas tanks at least half full. But there are concerns after gas was contaminated at 29 gas stations across Florida. Tampa International Airport will close at midnight and will remain closed until after the storm. John, you'll recall last year, Hurricane Ian made a last minute switch. And so officials are telling everyone along Florida's Gulf Coast to be on alert. John. Christian Benavides, thank you. CBS News senior weather and climate producer David Parkinson joins us now in studio. David, it's good to be with you again, depending on... Uh, <laughs> Not You're, the greatest circumstances. No, but, but it's, you know. it's always great in bad circumstances to have you explaining them. So where is Idalia now and where is it likely to head? Yeah, so let's take a look at the storm. So we've got uh, Idalia, which is not all that impressive looking. And then we have Franklin up here, which looks really, I mean, that is a powerful looking storm. Look at how well-defined that eye is. That's a major hurricane. But you remember I was talking about fish storms last time. Uh, that's a fish storm. It's not going to impact any land, but Idalia absolutely is. Now, here's the thing to take clear note on Adalia. You don't see an eye, but you do see convection starting to fire. You see some of these brighter colors. What that means is the storm is trying to organize, but it's failing because there's a low level center in one area and there's an upper level center in another area. Not until those things stack is do you actually get the chance for it to move northward and really strengthen. So the key part that I want to point out here is the, all of the area here this is a huge area for development, but until the storm coalesces, that means we are in the clear for development. So that's why it's still a tropical storm, even though you might have thought by this point it would have been a hurricane. So is it possible it could peter out? I wouldn't say that it's possible that it could peter out, but the direction that it goes, that's the real interesting question here. So let's show you a little bit of the future cast. This is the official forecast from the National Hurricane Center, and then I threw uh, one of the models, the North American model, on here, and you can see Right now, this storm is a Category 3. This is what the landfall is expected to be Wednesday morning. You'll see all of the storm now pushing the water onto land. So we've got the storm surge threat. I want to, again, point out here, you've got all of this water being pushed on shore, even into Tampa Bay. That's why there's a 4- to 7-foot storm surge threat there, John, is that even though the center of the storm, look at how far the center of the storm is away. That's 150, 200 miles. But again, all of this water is getting pushed right up along the coast. And that's the area where you've got an 8 to 12 foot storm surge. That's where the worst storm surge is. And then as the storm continues to track further inland, you see another threat, interestingly enough, actually. You see that threat right here along the coastline of South Carolina and North Carolina as well as you move into Thursday. What could happen in terms of weakening? Well, here's your ensemble model plot. There's a lot of them here, right? So they're, they, we run the model 50 different times. There's ensemble member number 50. Um, so we run the model 50 different times, we tweak the physics a little bit, and we give us all these different indications. So some of them, like this one, shows that it's already in central Florida by 7 a.m. on Wednesday. That would suggest a weaker storm because it's moved over land sooner, it's moved quicker, but it's moved closer to Tampa Bay, so the impacts might actually be worse there. If you get something like model number 28 here, it has a lot longer over the warmer water. So this will probably be your strongest storm but it will be the weakest impacts because it's so much farther from Tampa. But this right here, this is the National Hurricane Center line right here in the middle. It's a little bit more easterly focused. I think there's two reasons for that. One, because that's where the guidance seems to suggest, but also because they want to keep Tampa just on the edge of the cone to keep people sensitive there. But again, 
we still have a lot of variability. I mean, this from yeah. edge to edge is well over 200 miles. Just really briefly, uh, stick on that point, which is when people see the cone, remind us again of how to read the cone and what it tells us. Sure. So the cone basically, so let, if, if the cone were, were this, let's just say, I mean, it's not exactly that, but let's say the cone were this. What you need to know is, is that the, anywhere in the cone is where you're actually, the cone actually extends all the way out to here. Um, anywhere in the cone is fair game for a landfall. Two thirds of the time. One third of the time, it's actually outside of the cone. So we do it based upon the, the historical error. But even if you are not in the cone, so if you're nowhere in here, but you're down in Tampa or you're down in Fort Myers, it doesn't actually matter. You actually get some of the impact. So storm surge shows you that we've got storm surge possible down by Fort Myers, four to seven feet in Tampa. And then the worst here, again, that whole area down there, well outside of the cone and flooding, same thing. You don't have to be in the cone to have a freshwater flood threat. Uh, this is a large storm. Everyone in Florida, you've got about 24 hours before things really go downhill. And that's the key message I can give you tonight is if you are in the Tampa Bay area by this time tomorrow, it's too late to make your moves. So make all your preparations and make your moves over the next 12 to 24 hours. David Parkinson, I gather we're probably going to be talking to you again. Thank you for talking to us now. Thanks, John.